Hey, good morning from the dojo. You know, I avoided talking about the Jake Paul Tyson fight completely. I didn't really watch the build up. I thought it was all kind of a goof. Um, I knew it was going to be BS. And the last thing I heard was Carl Frock, German fighter, saying, oh, the whole contract is garbage. It's like got a no knockout, <laughs> no damage clause, which would make sense as to why uh, um, Paul didn't knock Tyson's ass out the 10 times he had the right hand available to do it. And also why Tyson didn't hit very hard besides being old and not being able to hit very hard. I know all the pundits out there are like, power is the last thing to go. Well, it still fucking goes, I tell you. <laughs> I'm 59. Power? I, I, I train Muay Thai my, as a drummer. My trainer would go, you have natural power. Don't hit so hard. Um, but it would fade in 30 seconds. <laughs> It doesn't matter. The power just goes with the wind and with everything else. But I don't want to get into the science. I don't to, I'm going to stay in this speculative, controversial bubble and anger that I'm in right now. What got me riled today was because I have noticed that Jake Paul and Logan Paul like to take the high road the whole way through and say, you know, we, we're, we're God boys now and Jesus and we wouldn't take advantage of anyone. We're giving him an opportunity to improve his legacy and make money and I'm doing this and blah, blah. It's all bull, it's entertainment, and it has nothing to do with boxing. That's what drives me crazy. Young people think this is boxing or has anything to do with boxing. This is an exhibition. It's no more real boxing than Rocky versus Hulk Hogan in Rocky Three. <laughs> that is an exhibition. It has nothing to do with actual boxing. And let me explain how. Because real boxing is a brutal, disgusting, nasty, nasty business. And very, very, very rarely will, will anyone with their own millions become a boxer. Okay, that's first of all. They, there's a famous saying, you play football, you can play hockey, you can play basketball, you can play soccer. You don't play boxing. You fight. And it's a fight. And it's a real fight. And bones break and bleed and cut. You see Amanda Serrano's cut the other night, that eye cut? That never goes away. They'll stitch it up, scar stays forever. Not only that, but as a boxer, it stays weaker because the scar tissue cuts and it's above her eye. So every time she gets hit there, that's gonna open, she's gonna bleed. You ever hear Vito Antofermo, a bunch of others, you know, Cooney, a lot of bleeders. Ends your career. So that cut on her eye is gonna shorten her career. Does Jake Paul have any reason to shorten his career? Is he gonna face an injury like that with these goofy things? Because it's an exhibition. I will believe, see, and what Jake Paul did is fine. I have nothing against it. He created an entertainment, a boxing entertainment lane, where he fights has-beens, lummoxes, and he milks people for, you know, pay-per-views and excitement and fleas. He's a YouTuber. He's doing it since he's nine, ten. He's good at it. Did it through gaming. Now he's doing it through sports betting. I say his next move for him and his brother will be some, sign of, some sort of religious evangelism where they can make a millions and millions and millions of dollars or politics. Because you bring your followings with you, then you add to it, and they're going to do that, which is great marketing. Nothing to do with boxing. When Jake Paul, when I consider Jake Paul a boxer or serious, is when he fights some nobody, some no one, no one has ever heard of from the New York Golden Gloves, who went to prison for three years for gangbanging or whatever, got his life together in prison through boxing, came out of prison, and he's just been training and training and fighting smokers on Sunday mornings and f late fucking Tuesday night events uh, at gyms and armories. And he's working his way up and he's working his way up and he's getting through injury and he's training. And he's that guy that's up in the four o'clock in the morning like Rocky drinking fucking raw eggs out of a glass in the freezing cold. While Jake Paul wakes up to 20 millions and 50 million and 70 million dollars of trainers and advanced chefs and his own facilities like a real deal pro would do. But he's not fighting real deal pros. He won't even fight real deal amateurs. <laughs> he's not fighting anyone of any real value or interest except to those that are built by the hype of these events. And that's it. It's a self-contained phony boxing universe. It's a cosplay of boxing. Just because you get in there and go, hey, 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 who box, box? Yeah, look at me, I'm cool. <laughs> Hit me on a chair. It's a cosplay. And when he talks about Carl Frock, it's he's like, I did more than the real, the real bitchy little twat who knows who he is came out. And he's like, I've done more in four years than that guy did his whole career. He shouldn't be washing my cars. I'm like, dude, if you fought Carl Frock in his prime, 
he would have killed you. And I don't say it as like hype or betting. It's just a natural fact. You've never fought a real boxer. You've never fought a real fighter. I mean, you fought Tommy Fury, who's on the cusp, and he easily beat you. So what are we talking about? Why are we being gaslit as though this is a real sport or real boxing or means anything? It's an embarrassment to the sport. Just like I told you about the Olympic event that had nothing to do with trans, but the whole world took it into this trans direction to destroy boxing. No, it's just old boxing crooked shit. That's all. When the sanctioning body was in France, the Algerians do great because they're 10% Algerian. When they're in Russia and that sanctioning body runs it, the Russian one. Is that shocking to you? Has nothing to do with who has a penis or doesn't have a penis. It's all deflection to make you feel like you know something. But you don't know anything about boxing. I do. It's a boring, lonely, hard, angry, nasty sport. And when you make it all the way to the top, that's where the riches and the rewards are. That's where the limelight is. And it doesn't last. It's a hard, hard sport. So to watch this chucklehead just turn it into a, a YouTube entertainment you know, lane, that's cute, it's good. And as an old guy, I could look at it and go, okay, it's technology and progress, but it's still destroying a sport. Unfortunately, that sport has destroyed itself a number of times. And like I said, the Olympic thing chips it away. Then you'll notice though, the best boxers do not come from Hollywood. <laughs> they don't come from YouTube. They come from Dagestan and Mexico City and Monterey and war-torn countries and, and, and Serbia and Iran. That's where boxers are coming from right now. They're not coming from, they're not coming, they're not Bitcoin fucking moguls, okay? What do you call it? Zuckerberg and the, uh, the the two twins there are not becoming boxers. But Jake Paul, once gaming's over, his, his, his fan base grew up. They moved on. So how did he reconnect with this fan base? Through this phony boxing thing. It's amazing. But he's so dedicated. I'm impressed. But that's what good YouTubers do. They're dedicated to the bit. I promise you his next one, you're going to hear more God. More God from him and his brother about God, boy. More Jesus. Jesus tattoos. Jesus on the t-shirts. Lots of quotes you're going to see from Philippians and Ecclesiastes. All this stuff. It's just going to be on whatever, you know. It's just gonna, this crazy ass shit. And um, that'll probably be their next thing. Because you know why? I was thinking it could be, um, what did I say? Politics. But politics has too many rules. See, if, he, if they do to religion what they did to boxing... They're going to make a killing. They're going to do so well. Because there's so many rubes out there just dying to latch on. So many rubes will believe because he has money and because he has fame that he knows something and he can somehow transfer that something to them. But he can't. It's just going to be a transfer of money from them to him, which is okay. I mean, people like to be parted with their, part, part with their money, you know. You know, what do they say? A fool and their money are soon parted. And that's, there's nothing wrong with that. And there's always going to be someone out there trying to fleece it. It's just not boxing. Okay? Just please um, remove the boxing from this equation. It could be Nintendo S Switch. Could be, uh, it could be uh, Grand Theft Auto or Call of Duty. It's all of that, but it's not boxing. It's cosplay. Real boxing is mean and angry and dirty and nasty. And you don't get in there as a joke or a clown show, no matter how much professional training you have. When Jake Paul gets in there with a Golden Gloves uh, fighter his age, I'll believe something. Something. Because until then, it's bullshit. Just complete gaslight nonsense. And the fact that Drake lost a ton of money and all these other celebrities lost a ton of money. Oh, it makes my heart feel so good because that's all you guys care about sports is gambling. But boxing has a long, rich, 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 dense, serious history. And you guys are just shitting all over it. I'll post my picture of me in front of the Boxing Hall of Fame up in Canastoga, New York. Do you know where it is? Canastoga, New York. It's about an hour and a half from where I live now. It's just west between Utica and Syracuse. There's a Boxing Hall of Fame. Do you know that? Does Jake Paul know that? Has he ever been to it? Because all he does is shit on it. And it, it's irking me today. And he was so good and so nice. But then one Carl Frock told the truth. And I see, ooh, it's stuck in the old side there. And now the mouth is opening. Now it's like, oh, we're the best. We're the greatest. You all stuck. <laughs> you did nothing for boxing. I did lots of boxing. You did nothing for boxing except ruin the sport and make some money doing it. That's it. And you didn't help Mike Tyson's legacy. You're making a joke out of a sport that we love. A great, great sport. World Heavyweight champion of the world was the best, highest title an athlete could have ever 
at one point in time. Muhammad Ali, Frazier, those guys, the highest title in the world. You were the most popular, most outside of the of, of kings and presidents. You were the most famous popular man in the universe if you were the heavyweight champion of the world. So his clown show, 25 cent video game arcade nonsense, that's the boxing. You see why, it's, you see why you're disappointed in the fight? Because it's not boxing. You see why the Serrano fight was controversial in the other fight, but it was a good fight? Because it was boxing. There was a fight. It's legitimate. It has to be a fight. That's why it's not for everyone. When you step foot in the ring, you're in another universe. It's kill or be killed. It's no joke. And now there's bare, bare fisted fighting. No gloves at all, just tape, hand tape. Fighting is fighting. Let Jack, I want to see Jake Paul get in there and some bare fisted. You know why there's bare fisted? Because he's ruined the real sport. So everybody has to go out and make money doing stupid shit because they're not going to be able to get into the sport of boxing because he's ruined it. <laughs> there won't be any ranks to climb up. There won't be golden gloves. There won't be anything because no one has money to support that because he's going to take all the oxygen from the entire sport, which is what he's done, and turn it into what it is. And then go, I'm more important than you guys who fought for 25 years. Like, this is the gaslighting nonsense BS. So like everything else, all you young People who think Jake Paul's a great fighter, go back on YouTube now and watch the history of fights. Watch Tyson's fights. Watch Muhammad Ali's fights. Watch Joe Frazier's fights. Watch all these other fights. Ken Norton and Foreman and, uh, and uh, who was the one they were joking about last night is going to fight now? Larry Holmes. Yeah, go watch some of these clips and highlights. Go see Vito Antofremo. Go see, um, you know, uh, who, who was it? Um, Who's that? The great trilogies there of Trinidad and um, and and and, and uh, Ward, Mickey Ward, and Felix Trinidad, and Alexis Arguello, and all these names. You never heard of any of these names, right? But you've heard of Jake Paul. It's like saying, you know, I've heard of the YouTuber, but I've never heard of all these boxers. But I'm a boxing fan. <laughs> no, you got it backwards. He's not the boxer. He's a cosplayer who might as well be at Anime Con if Anime Con had a boxing wing <laughs> or a phony sports wing. Real boxers toil and slave and hard and hurt and ache and build hardness, hardness, hardness from the day they start until the day they get their first fight and through it if they survive. You know, I watched Chris Weidman last night. This guy is an MMA fighter. You know him. I was picked, I'll show you the picture of me with him trading with him. Ended my, ended my grappling completely. It was my last time I ever grappled. Was I took Chris Weidman's class, which I shouldn't have been in. I was there just to train and work out. They always say the old guy, ah, come on, join the class. And I'm like, oh, it's Weidman's class. I'll join it, but I won't do much. Of course, I ended up doing all the stuff. I was supposed to do my friend, 250 pounder on my back. I'm trying to buck him off. Like Then I roll into something where I end up landing in a choke on him. I don't even know how the fuck he did it. It was so advanced Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and I couldn't roll at all. I couldn't do nothing. And I, all I know is my spine was, has never been the same since. I've been doing epidurals pretty much since that day. And you know what? But if I'm going to go out, that's the way to go out. Because I trained with real hard, angry ass, tough ass, professional UFC fighters. And I feel way more real than Jake Paul and his like, you know, chef <laughs> and his and his brother and whatever are waking up in their you know mag like maglet mag magnetic trillion dollar bed, <laughs> dude. Real boxers wake up on the fucking couch or the floor and they get up and they drink those raw eggs and some protein shake and eat something and then they run in the cold and uh, no wires on their body, no scientific nonsense, no you know proven you know high end supplements, no high end machinery. They got what whatever whatever Planet Fitness got, that's what they got. So I want you to fight that guy. Fight the kid who's got, you know, your age, who just came out of, you know, a bunch of years of training and who's hungry, hungry and has nothing else in their life to fall back on. No 20 million, no nothing. Just a shit home with a busted up family and, uh, and no real prospects. So let's see you fight that guy, Jake. That's not going to happen, is it? So anyway, enjoy your next, you know, career move, whatever that is. Uh, you know, I hope it's not hockey because I like hockey too. Please stop ruining sports that I like. Go to wrestling. Wrestling loves this stuff. But you know why he won't go to wrestling? Because you can't cosplay wrestling because it's already cosplayed. So if he wants to do that, some seven foot, 350 pound guy is going to throw him. <laughs> and that's not as much fun as going, hey, hit me on the chin, old man. <laughs> hit me on the chin. Look, I've been training. I'm a boxer. Ooh, I'm the king. I'm the best. Yeah.
fuck yourself, kid. You're an idiot. And that, but you're a genius, but you're an idiot when it comes to boxing. You're not a fighter. You're not the real deal. You're, you're not whatever nicknames they give you, except maybe lying God's boy or God's boy for profit. So, listen, I don't really care. Carl Frock also has had some of the most boring fights I've ever seen in my life. But they were still boxing. They were tactical. There was hitting going on. There was real blood flying and spit. It wasn't this, you know, poor Mike Tyson, unhealthy stoner waddling around in there while this other guy pretended to be a boxer. I was like, this is, and people spent so much time and money and hype and energy on it. It's like, I didn't watch one minute of it, not one minute of the buildup of this, and I'm so happy I didn't, because I knew. And if I said it, I would have been, you know, just there's no winning when you say it. People don't want you to know. They want to know that they're right, and then when they're wrong, they just pretend they were right or forget it these days. That's the new thing. No one ever has a comeuppance. No one ever really has to face the reality of their bad decisions publicly. They just deal with it privately, which is okay, but this is a public forum. So I put my crap on the line when I say this stuff and I put my credibility out there. And you know, and I watched a lot of boxing people take this very seriously. And then again, just like the election, get egg all over their face. Same thing with the pundits. They took it so seriously and then got egg all over their face because they have no clue what the real pulse is. And, um, and they don't want to say what the reality is. So they're pretending that something's real and wondering why it doesn't like, it doesn't compute. And I'm just saying, of course it doesn't compute. It's not real. Are you guys that stupid? <laughs> but apparently, I thought we were that stupid, but it's just intentional. It's just that no one cares anymore. It's burnout of an empire. We got about 40, 50 years left before things really, really change in this country, whether we like it or not. And we just put it on steroids. So, you know, that's just the way it goes. We're not unique. It was the Romans, the Ottomans, the Dutch, the Chinese twice. Um, <laughs> we're just another empire that lasts about 250 to 300 years. We're at... In 2026, it'll be 250 years. So we are long in the tooth as republics go. And, um, but no one cares. No one watches the cyclical nature of empires by Ray Diallo like me. Nobody pays attention. We're just frogs in a pot getting ready to boil. And America's never looked more pre-World War II or, or World War I-ish than it does right now. So we're looking very World War I, II era-ish right now with an exploding economy that's going to turn into a massive depression at some point um, because of the wealth disparity and the money printing and the debt. It's just natural. It's going to happen. It has to. What goes up, 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 up. It has to come down, 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 and out, sort of, right? So we'll try to manipulate it. We'll try to make a soft landing, but it won't. <laughs> it's going to be a hard-ass landing. So you got about three or four months left to get into the party while the oligarchs are burning off the kerosene. So get some crypto, get some stock sh stuff in there, get some money in the stock market now, let it go about three, four months and get the hell out forever <laughs> or for a while. And that's just because it's going to have, after this 15 years of run up, we're going to have a solid seven, eight years of uh, stagnancy, especially when Trump just prints us into oblivion along with the Fed and, um, and the, the the Republicans just rubber stamp every bad deregulation. People think this is all new. You know what? Nothing major is going to happen except, you know, we couldn't go fishing because the water was so polluted. You know, we couldn't breathe because the air was so polluted. We couldn't do much because we didn't have any money to do it. We were in complete debt. You know, we became the 70s cars were on blocks and it was an ugly, ugly time. And that's what will happen because that's what happens during recessions and depressions. And we could keep staving it off by printing money and doing this and that. But that creates a bigger, bigger bigger problem down the road. But anyway, I don't know how I went from boxing to this. I don't think Jake Paul's going to be worried about money tomorrow, but every other fucking real boxer out there, every real boxer that's at five in the morning right now, there's some boxer who got up a half hour before me that is now training. And I'm not saying Jake Paul doesn't do that, but he's definitely doing it in a different realm. He's in the, uh, the Drago science realm and the rest of us are still getting up in the morning and just Running up and down the square, <laughs> running around the block, around the track, going to the gym in your stinky ass sweatsuit, you know, going, should I have coffee or should I just have water or should I have my energy drink? <sighs> but I got to fight in three weeks. Let's get going. <laughs> it's a different realm, different world, different job, different career. What he, what Jake Paul is doing has nothing to do with the realm of boxing. It is a cosplay, representative, entertainment, <laughs> um, processed cheese food of boxing. It's not actual boxing. It's a boxing adjacent product. <laughs> And a really shitty one, as you saw last night, because 
millionaires aren't boxers. Not until they've really worked their way up to it. But anyway, that's all I got to say. It's too long. Have a great day. Take care of each other. Be well. Peace. And uh, go watch some real boxing. You'll see the difference. Peace out. Love you.